the, uh, the first half, I think you guys went on an 18-8 run, and yeah. then to start the second, went on the 12-2 yeah. run. How much would that coincide with you guys ended up doing uh, for the rest of the game, you think? Well, I, you know, we had <clears throat> one time out where everybody to a man was talking about the ability to guard the ball. They were just blowing by us, getting to the basket for layups. And um, once we stopped them from doing that, uh, and got the ball, we were able to get out and run, and that generated some energy. And um, then coming out of the halftime break, it was just juice, toughness, grit. Um, offensive execution was, was decent, but I thought we were able to get the stops in a row to start the half. That, that really gave us a lot of energy. Curious with Devin, I'd actually like at the end of the regular season, you weren't worried about him in a slump and then tonight just to see what he did. Say that again. I said you weren't worried about him being in a slump no. at the end, the, the end of the season. How nice was it to see him yeah. get going in the second half? I mean, he was, I was planning on taking him out um, the f first two minutes of the fourth. Then he got going and then I said one more play and then one more play and he kept hitting shots. <laughs> so I just let him go. Um, but when he's attacking like that and then he was, you know, knocking down big shots from outside, it just keeps everybody off balance. And I thought the spacing was a lot better tonight. I thought we were um, organized a little bit better than we were the other day. But just having the balance of him and Kevin being able to get to their spots with a live ball helps. But I thought Chris did a really good job of just putting the ball in Book's hands and saying, you go. And uh, Chris was on the second side. So, you know, Book scores in a number of ways. Um, and when he's going like that, I think the team feeds off of his his uh, high level play, if you will. One other thing I have when you look at Kevin, that was more off the curls and him getting some movement early. How big did you think that was just to get him started? Yeah, in that way? I mean, I, we're just trying to keep it as simple as we can um, and space around him. Um, I thought Da and Biz did a really good job of freeing him up with the screening, and I think the more they play together, they can figure out. You know, is he going to go over top or underneath? And when he catches it with a live ball, he's so tall, he can see over top and see where the double team is coming from, but he can also just get that shot off. Well, you guys went on an incredible run in those middle quarters, and a lot of it was Devin either finding the shot for himself or his teammates. Was that the offense that you were looking for after game one and just the flow? I, I think, again, like any time we can rebound the ball, like we, we rebounded tonight, we actually won. Um, I don't know what the stat was after tonight's games, but almost every team that's won the rebound battle has won the game. I think it's nine out of ten before tonight. So when we rebound like that, we can get it to any one of those guys. And now, as I've said before, our best offense is a defensive stop. But when Book is going downhill like that, he's hard to guard. As a playmaker, just the steps that you've seen him take in the last two years specifically at this winning level to yeah. be able to diagnose a defense the way that he did. I, I think continuity helps when you have a player like Book because you spend a lot of time in the gym talking about spacing and where guys should be, and that allows for him to go. And then if he does have to make the pass, he knows where that guy is. Um, and then the other part is he's just good. You know, when he's rolling like that, it's hard to – to guard him when he's going downhill. But I think having Kevin on the floor um, allows for more space and then Torrey is knocking down shots. So he's just a tough cover when he's playing downhill, but in particular off of stops. Coach with Book and KD getting those live ball situations, mm -hmm. you guys hit a lot more mid-range shots tonight, but you also generated a few more threes. Yeah, you like that balance? a few more. Um, I, I think they, they are giving us a few of them because Tori is outside, J.O.'s outside, and they're plugging the paint a bit uh, with Zubach. And so that allows for us to get some corner threes. But anytime you can get the ball in your best player's hands and space the floor well, I think it allows for you to be more efficient. That's what they're doing with Kawhi. Um, he gets it at the nail. It's a tough place to double team. It reminds me of back in the day with Dirk, you know, when he played at the nail. That's a tough spot to to try to double team. So we're just going to do our best to, you know, give those guys the ball in space and then everybody else around them um, has to be ready to make a play. And then I thought Chris was down the stretch. He was really good in pick and roll. One time he shot it, I, I couldn't see the basket and I was behind him and he still made the shot um, off of pick and roll. So th those three guys 
uh, two and live ball situations, Chris and pick and roll, that allows for us to be efficient on offense. How big was that stretch in the second quarter where it felt like the offense kind of sputtered and DA hit a couple of mm -hmm. mid range just, just to keep you guys afloat? It was really good. I thought early he was in the crowd. He was almost diving too low to try to get to his floater, and then he was passing it. And after a timeout, everybody was like, dude, shoot the ball. And he started catching in his spot, and he didn't hesitate. And those buckets, even though they're twos, they allow for us to set our defense. And when we're set, we're pretty good. The TV broadcast picked up you, I think, saying, draw your line in the sand. How much was that the message at, at halftime? And how much was it adjustments or just it just uh, Sometimes playoff basketball, I mean, we, people talk about adjustments all the time. And, and we, we make them all throughout the game. Um, but a lot of basketball is just being able to sit down and guard the ball and keep a guy from getting to the basket or being able to contest the shot. And I think man-to-man, -man, coaches, everybody felt it. We just needed to guard the ball and keep them out of the paint. Russ was getting to the basket. Kawhi was beating the double-team baseline. And if he beats the double team baseline, you got two guys behind him now. So you got to help with the third guy, and then that gives up offensive rebounds or threes on the backside. So we felt like if we could just guard the ball for at least two dribbles and force them into a tough shot and rebound, we can get out and run. But that was something that we all felt. Um, and we have a saying here you know, we call each other up, not out. And so everybody felt it, and we just executed a lot better. Yeah, after that uh, deflection that Chris had uh, yeah. for Westbrook's pass, that uh, he looked like he was visibly, you know, hand holding his hand, is it? And he's holding it on the next out of bounds. He play. seems. He, I, I don't have anything to report. He seems like he's okay. Two more, Dave. Yeah, Monty. Um, Chris Paul looked like again in the first half he was struggling with the catch and shoot on the threes. You know, he was he was driving in and trying to hit the midi instead. And then in the in the third quarter, that started working for him. He's but he's still running himself off the three point line. Are you guys talking to him about that, or are you just like, hey, do what you got to do, Chris? Uh, it's probably both. I mean, we want him to take those shots, but you don't want to take away from his creativity. Um, you know, for whatever reason, he didn't take those shots. But down the stretch, he took the shots that mattered. And you know, that's that's just Chris, Kevin Young, and Book, and everybody's telling him to shoot those shots, and he can make them at a high level, but I do like him attacking the basket, too, because he can pass it or get to his midi. Monty, um, in the first answer, you mentioned toughness and grit. And I know this win was important, but was the how just as important that it wasn't a, a shootout that it had to get a little ugly and you guys had to figure some things out yeah. in those middle quarters? I think that's just playoff basketball. Um, when you have a close game like this, it, it's going to be ugly. There's going to be some calls that you don't like. There's going to be some physicality. Um, there's going to be situations where there's going to be breakdowns and you got to put the fire out on the backside. And those things happen. Um, emotions are high. Um, and I, I like the guys, uh, the way they're getting after each other because they're holding each other accountable. And that, that's the sign of a close team. And so all that stuff is just a part of playoff basketball, in my opinion. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. You guys uh, started off the game a little slow again and, uh, on offense anyway, getting getting things going. And then the second quarter, you guys just kind of started getting more comfortable in the offense and seeing what you were seeing in the Clippers defense? Was that more about just getting used to their defense or figuring yourselves out? I mean, yeah, it was obviously a point of emphasis for us to have a better start. But you know, you, you're still not promised that you're going to make all your shots. So um, and just felt the game out, um, settled into it, seen what they were doing, and just went from there. Chris, you start out the game tonight. One for five, and then uh, finished out going seven for nine. Kind of, what was your motivation to keep shooting tonight and and uh, just keep going for shots? Got to, got to. Um, I mean, with the way we was playing, the pace, whatnot, them doubling on KD, and just you know, I mean, we've been doing this for a while. A lot of times, uh, me and Da, when we get to our pick and roll with the shooters that we got, that leaves the uh, the middies wide open. 
Chris coming in. Uh, Chris coming into the game, uh, you lost a few games in a row with Scott Foster as the referee, and I know a couple of years ago you said 11 in a row coming into the locker room after a loss uh, against the Clippers, and tonight getting a win. Uh, are you still are you still thinking about that? Uh, finally being able to win a game that Scott Foster's referee. I ain't notice. <laughs> now, I think I think we we all about in this run, you know what I mean, minimizing distractions, you know what I mean. So <clears throat> that is what it is. I'm sure it's still gonna be a thing. League know what it is, so can't control it. You ain't been able to control all the other ones, so it ain't gonna change now. You know what I mean? So the the game is the game. Definitely not coming in late, but just that that shot at the end of the first how much did that lead to what you ended up doing in the second half, hitting that huge three? I think how we finished out the second quarter overall, you know, outside of that shot, you know, was good momentum going into the third. And, you know, how we started the third quarter was big for us too. Um, yeah, they, they asked about the start before you got on in here. And, you know, we we obviously wanted to get her off to a better start again and, and didn't, but we just let the game settle and went from there. Chris did. Comfortable. <laughs> Can you expand a bit just on how the zone you were in and how you were feeling about that process? Um, yeah, I mean, it's that time of year. Um, you know, everything counts. Um, I think with the talent that we have on this team, you know, spacing is a, is a big thing. So, you know, just, you know, trying to give Kev space, trying to give CP space, um, you know, just putting everybody in the best position to succeed. I know with the, the four stars on the floor now that Kevin's here, you talk about spacing and everything. Was it important to just get a win with him just to prove that you could do it in the postseason? I know that kind of sounds dumb a little bit, but just, just to prove and, and for yourself. <laughs> That's a two-time champ, two-time Finals MVP. Um, you know, he he's proven enough. Um, I mean, we didn't lose any games with each other during the regular season, and you know, we just dropped Game One. So, you know, just want to come out and respond. And um, like you said, you know, spacing is a big part of that. You know, just you know, he's so talented. You just have to let him work. Earl That's an emphasis going on the whole playoffs. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> minimize distractions. You know, we know what it looked like sometimes during the regular season with techs and this, that, and the, the third. Um, we're trying to control what we can control. You know what I mean? And just trying to, you know, stay present and focus. It's mostly us two. So we got to hold each other accountable with it. Straight up. What do you guys make of Tory's contribution so far in this series, whether it's the spacing, the shooting, the screening, or just the rebounding? Craig made just about every big shot for us tonight. You know, if you watch games, it's the, uh, <clears throat> it's the timing of the shots. You know, sometimes when the team got a chance to cut it from six to four, three, and then Craig would hit a three to put us up nine. It was the timing of the shots that he made, and uh, that's, that's big in the series. Sorry, this is already asked, but you only took one three tonight, and there's so much questions uh, through this late in the season about you being more of a spot up three point shooter. So, with Book and Katori hitting so many threes, did that enable you to get more to your midi uh, without uh, having to rely on shooting more? Yeah, it's funny. Uh, I've been practicing threes like crazy, thinking they was gonna like leave me open like them last few games, and then I spent the whole day watching all my shots against the Clippers throughout the season and they was really giving me middies. And so just refocusing, you know what I mean? They not really leaving me for the for the three, but we didn't play against them a lot, so <laughs> just just get to your spots. They're 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 really changing their defense a lot. Um 
I don't know if you've seen this high volume of changing before. How are you managing that? He's obviously, he's obviously trying to confuse you guys. T, that's T. Lou. Yeah. I think when they do that, we just have to simplify it. Um, you know, a lot of things that we haven't seen before. Um, but they have a veteran team that, you know, can do it on the fly. I don't think a lot of teams can do that. And I remember their, our last series with them, they had a lot of stuff with them too. So, you know, when they're doing that, just simplify it for us. Last two. Devin, following uh, the game one loss, what, what was Sunday night and, and Monday like for you just kind of sitting on that, that, that first game setback? <laughs> it's never a good feeling. Um, but, yeah, I, I just got on Call of Duty and blew some steam off. That's all he do. Well, yeah. That's all he do is play Call of Duty. <laughs> Forget what Mike Conley said, man. We, we got to play. <laughs> we got to play. <laughs> It was funny, Mike was talking. He was like, yeah, we're, we can't be playing Call of Duty. Carl walked in the back and was like, hey, Mike, you getting on? We get on? Yeah. That's, that's our generation, man. Uh, that's one. There's. <laughs> Does this kind of feel like a, because you guys are so good in the mid-range, kind of feel like a, a battle of threes versus twos because you guys are so efficient there and they like to get a lot of threes up? Uh, I don't know. I think we just be playing basketball. <laughs> you know, we... We, um, I mean, you think about KD, you know, everybody always call him a basketball purist. We got a lot of us like that. If a two is open, we're going to take it. <laughs> if the three open, we're going to take that two. And so uh, we just we just hoop and try to make sure we got the most points at the end of the game. Chris, I, I saw you nodding the word. Please me. The prayer emoji, what was that about? I don't know. I got to watch the game over. <laughs> I gotta watch the game over. <laughs> 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 <laughs>